Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Glory. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God for allowing us one more day. Amen. One more day that we can come and share the word of God with you. Good evening to all of our faithful family and followers, Facebook family, YouTube family. Welcome on in today into our Bible enrichment. Amen. I right hear the gift of life fellowship. I am Pastor Brent Smith coming to you once and again live via StreamYard, Facebook, and YouTube. Amen. Come on in the house. Amen. And as you come in, please like and share. Y'all know the routine. We've been through it enough times now that I don't have to continue to say this, but even for the newcomers, if you come on in and come in and you like our page, please like our page, follow us on Facebook and YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel that we can continue to give you notifications when we come on. And as well, when you come in, go ahead and like and share it. Share it to all of your family and friends, those who are in need of the word of God, that we might continue to bless, bless the people of God and the body of Christ. Amen. So as you come in, hit that share button, get it out to some of those that you love, that you know. Um, there are some that can't get out. We want to be able to reach them. There are some that don't know about us and we want to be able to reach them. So continue to send it out. Send it out to your family. Send it out to your friends. Amen. Let them know that we're on. Let them know that the word of God is being taught and interpreted and rightly divided. Amen. We're doing our very best to bring you a quality uh, broadcast. We're doing our very best to bring the message to you um, as it was intended. Uh, we don't try to um, uh, use our own interpretation or usurp our own authority as we come forward, but we really try to stick closely to the Bible and the interpretation of that uh, thereof. Amen. So as you come on in, please like and share, like and share. Let me know that you're watching. Type something in the comment section. Let us know that you're with us, um, that we can truly uh, uh, get your participation because I tell you, once you participate, it helps the it helps the Bible enrichment. Amen. Because the more we have, the more questions we have, uh, the more concerns we have, the more that we can feel your 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 concerns. Um, and it adds to the body of Christ. It adds to all of our learning. It adds to the teaching. Amen. So please, as you come in, if you have a question, concern, if you have a prayer request, if you have a praise report on today, let us know. Let us know. Um, and especially let us know that you have the love of God in your heart um, by telling God you love him. Tell God, thank you. You know, give him a hallelujah. Do all these things to acknowledge your presence. Um, because by expressing your presence, we know how to go forth. Amen. So I'm just going to receive on platform with me tonight, none other than our very own Dr. Bright. How are you doing this evening, Dr. Bright? She's probably she's probably muted there. But um, amen. Sister Kim says, where were you on Sunday? Uh, hey, Sister Kim, I, I thought I had made the announcement last Tuesday that we wouldn't be coming on Sunday. Um, I was traveling, actually, and the First Lady, uh, First Lady is still on her vacay. She'll be back tomorrow. So while she was on her vacay, I did a little uh, 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 visiting of family and friends um, up in the New York City area. Um, so it was just, uh, um, um, you know, just a relaxing time. Um, but I did make the announcement that we wouldn't be coming in on Sunday, Sister Kim. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry that you didn't um, get the MO. Oh, you missed that announcement. Amen. So from now on, we're going to listen more closely to the church announcements. OK, Sister Kim, <laughs> you got you got to pay attention to them church announcements. All right. <laughs> Amen. But we're so glad to have you back on tonight. And we did. We missed you as well. Um, Pastor. OK, no problem. Uh, Pastor Ware, good evening, Pastor. I will be in and out. Okay, Pastor Ware, we thank you for just chiming in, though. Um, uh, I, I thank God for you just uh, taking your time, even though you have a busy schedule, and just sharing with us as well. Amen. So, um, Dr. Bright, are you there? Are you still muted? Are you talking to me today? <laughs> Dr. Bright, you on platform? 
<laughs> you on platform with me, Doctor Bright? <laughs> I couldn't get. I couldn't find the mute button. <laughs> oh, okay. I knew you were there, though. I knew you were there. Hey, Amen. So glad to have you with me on tonight, Doctor Bright. Um, and I see Minister Doles. Minister Doles must be on Facebook um, tonight as well. Or is she over on YouTube? Yeah, she's over on YouTube. Um, but I do. I want to welcome in all of our family and friends on tonight. Amen. Um, and like I said, you know, we didn't broadcast on um, Sunday. I was traveling. Um, and the First Lady, she's actually out of the country and she'll be back on tomorrow. Um, so we really just took a little time. Um, just to sh share with family and friends uh, over the weekend. Amen. So, but I'm so glad to be back in the chair and having this opportunity to once again bring the word of God to you. Amen. Uh, greetings, Pastor Connolly. Pastor Connolly, I've been meaning all day to send you a birthday greeting. Um, and, and once and again, I want to wish Pastor Andrew Connolly a happy birthday. Amen. Um, um, I want to always respect my elders. Um, and giving them their birthday accolades. Uh, that's 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 a little funny there, Pastor uh, Connolly. But anyway, I'm so glad that you could join us uh, on to tonight as well. Amen. Um, glory be to God. But I do, I want to send shout out and first of all, acknowledging our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, uh, acknowledging the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, just how good God's been to us and all the blessings that he has poured out upon us and and just all the true grace and mercy that he has afforded us. Um, he deserves all the glory. He deserves all of the honor. And truly, he does deserve all of our praise. Amen. So glory be to God. And, you know, I thank God for his traveling mercy over the weekend. Amen. I just thank God for how good he is, how amazing and how wonderful, magnificent our God truly is, you know. Uh, you know, many times we often say, well, I don't know where I'd be without the Lord. Well, I got a good idea of where I'd be and it wouldn't be right here. Amen. But I'm so thankful for our my place um, in this seat of teaching on tonight. And I don't take it for granted, nor do I take it lightly. But I, I esteem the word of God highly uh, in my life. And I, 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 I aim to do so even as we teach it and preach it um, to keep God lifted up and his word highly esteemed. Uh, that we might truly learn all that we need to know um, about uh, the body, uh, about uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and God, the Father, God, the Son and God, the Holy Spirit. But I just thank God for this opportunity uh, just to shout out the church and the church members on tonight. Um, uh, my first lady, uh, Jazz, who is traveling yet and still we're praying for her, for her safe return on tomorrow. Amen. Uh, Minister Doles, amen, in her respective place. Uh, Minister Tory in her respective place. Deacon Doles, uh, Sister Severe, all of the church members, Mother Batson, uh, Sister Erica, uh, Sister Sam, uh, Brother Douglas, all of the church members that, you know, just coming to the top of my head, uh, I, I, uh, Sister Renee, and all of the church members, I just want to give a shout out uh, to all of them. I know if I keep calling names, I'm going to leave somebody else. So please, uh, uh, all of the Gift of Life Fellowship, um, I, I truly do. I, I love you and I adore each and every one of you. And respectfully in your places, um, I give you glory and honor um, from God the Father and bring you greetings of grace and peace on tonight um, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus uh, the Christ. Amen. So um, and then again, I want to recognize also our overseer, Pastor Joseph Graham. Amen. So glad for Pastor Graham. Um, and I don't know if any of y'all caught the word that he brought on Sunday evening. Um, I made that announcement as, as well, that Pastor Graham would be broadcasting live on the Church of the Rock Ministries on Sunday evening. Um, he brought a strong word, um, amen, about the foolish man, the, what, the, what a fool in his money, basically, um, and what makes a man foolish. Uh, and and uh, he really brought a good word. So I was blessed by hearing that word uh, on Sunday night as well. He came in on, on six o'clock uh, on, on his uh, uh you, uh, Facebook channel. Uh, so uh, if anybody, he will be coming on six o'clock on his channel every Sunday night at six. So please join him. Catch the word as he brings it forth as well. Many of you have seen him teach. He is a great teacher of the word of God. And we want to bless the man of God. Amen. So glory be to God uh, for him. And Dr. Bright, who is on platform with me on tonight. Um, and then Pastor, I mean, Dr. Bright, if you don't mind, 
Um, would you pray us in tonight, if you don't mind, um, render a prayer uh, to bring us into the presence of the Lord, if you don't mind, dear heart? No. Do it now? Is that when you want me to do it, Pastor? Yeah, if you don't mind, if you don't mind. I know. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and for your grace. And we thank you for being the glory and the lift of our head, God. We thank you for this time of sharing that you've allowed us to have, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that the pastor would have supernatural recall of the word, God, and that the word would go forth anointed, and that lives would be changed, and that we would not live here the same way that we came. Well, God, that you would intervene in, in each one of our lives and those things that we are in need of, God, that you would give those things to us. And I pray a special prayer for the people down there in St. Louis that uh, in that flood area where the streets are flooded and the buildings are flooded and the churches are flooded. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you would do a supernatural thing there, God, that nothing would be damaged, God, and it would be all the glory that you would get the praise from it. I pray tonight, God, that you would arrest our spirits and arrest our minds, and God, that you would hold us close as we hear the word of God, and that you would give us a revelation of your word that would stay with us, God. And we thank you, God, for your very present help. And I call it down to your glory, Father. Thank you for being a faithful God who hears us. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Bright. Thank you so much. And I'm just going to read a devotional scripture for our hearing on tonight before we begin our lesson, before we begin anything. You know, I always want to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I want to honor him in all things said and all things done. And one of the ways that we can truly honor God is by, an, is by being attentive, um, by being truly attentive to his word. Amen. So, um, if you would, let's grab our um, reading devices, our Bible. Uh, if you still have a book called the Bible in your hand, um, open up your Bible. Or if you have a uh, device of which you can follow along uh, with the word of God with us on tonight. Um, I want to read the 40th Psalm. Amen. And I want to read from uh, verse 1 down through verse 11. Uh, 40th Psalm, verse one through 11. Um, and if you're there, when you get there, and I'm going to hold on because I know Facebook lags behind um, just a little bit. Facebook will lag behind just a little bit. And then so will YouTube. Um, so if I just give a moment of pause, I'm going to uh, greet Pastor Graham. Um, but while I'm greeting Pastor Graham, um, grab your Bibles and then open up to the 40th Psalm. Amen. How you doing this evening, Pastor Graham? Good. How are you, Pastor? I'm doing well, sir. I'm doing well. Uh, I'm blessed by that word you brought on Sunday. Appreciate Truly blessed. You. Amen. Appreciate your support, man. I really do. Amen. Uh, you know, and like I said, we're here helpers one to another. Um, you know, and everybody on Facebook knows and YouTube knows that Pastor Graham has supported us tremendously in all of our efforts. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Uh, that he is truly a part um, of our learning and part of our ministry. Amen. And and we want to do the same thing for him. We want to support him um, in, in any which way that we can, um, because once and again, you know, we're not in this thing by ourselves. We're not in it alone. Um, we're not out here for our self-esteem. We're not out here for self-glory, um, but we are truly here to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. We are here to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus to Christ. We are here to lift up God the Father. We are here to lift up the body of Christ. Amen. Because yeah. uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it'd be an awful lonely place if I got to heaven and I was there by myself. Amen. So I want everybody, everybody to pay attention to the word of God, to adhere to the word of God. But not only that, do what the Bible is telling us to do. Amen. So let's 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 support one another. Let's help one another. Um, but Pastor Graham, we love you. We thank you um, for even joining us on tonight. Amen. We know you didn't have to, but we're so glad that you did. Amen. You know, you got my support and I absolutely positively appreciate you. And, uh, you know, I'm in it for the long run. Amen. And, Amen. and, and, and my church family. Amen. And, yeah, I'm in it for the long run. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Bless you, sir. Let's go to the book of Psalms, the 40th Psalm, and I'm going to be reading from verse 1 down to verse 11. Amen. So it reads like this. 
He says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a, a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he had put a new song and he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are the, thy wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which that are toward, to us ward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered, my God. Sacrifice and offerings thou did not desire. Mine ears has thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin offering has not thou not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within mine heart. I have preached righteousness in the congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within mine heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Withhold not thou thy tender mercy from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Amen. Glory be to God. That is the word of God for the people of God. And may the hearers and doers of God's word be truly blessed on this evening. Amen. Hey, we're so grateful that we could come before you once and again. You know, I don't count it, uh, uh, take it lightly, but I count it an honor and a privilege that you y'all would continually come back. You would view us, you would help us, and you, you would support us. Amen. So uh, in, in that undertaking, I, I, I welcome you all in and I bring greetings of grace and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I send my peace out to you and I pray that that peace shall come back, amen, that we might remain uh, together in this house, amen. So glory, glory be to God. Uh, before we get started on tonight, uh, and I know Pastor Ware has mentioned, and so did Dr. Bright, uh, about the major flooding that's going on in St. Louis, that area uh, of Illinois there. Uh, and, I, and we do, we want to send our prayers out. Uh, to those people. I think it was a flash flood, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if I'm right, Pastor Ware, then you can let me know. Um, but uh, I, I just want to continue to pray for those uh, who are caught up in that that horrific um, um, event once and again. Um, and we understand that, you know, God's hand is God's hand and, and that we know we have our place and position and what we should do about it. And one of the things that we can do is to pray in a major way. Amen. Not only pray, um, but the Bible says that we ought to watch as well as pray. So there's some action also. Um, so if you can uh, lend anything or if you can um, if you know of somebody in that area and you can lend a hand to them. Uh, then we ought to be doing what is good and what is right. Amen. So uh, glory be to God. We know that uh, God's God, God's purpose shall be fulfilled. And we're going to continue um, on in God's purposes and in his plan. Amen. That his will might be truly fulfilled in not only our lives, but the lives of all of those who are seeking truth and justice. Amen. So glory be to God. Um, I'm just going to put it out there tonight. Um, if anybody on Facebook or YouTube, uh, if you have a scripture uh, that you have been contemplating, if you have a scripture that you have been pondering upon, if you have read your word today and if you read anything and you just want a little clarity, maybe on a scripture before we start. And there again, we do exercises like this just to get our spiritual juices flowing, just to get our mind in, in the realm of the spirit um, that we might look at the Bible uh, in, in a way that it brings clarity to us. Um, so if anybody has a scripture on tonight that they would like to just say, hey, I've been reading this scripture um, and, and there's something that I might not understand about it. You know, I, I really want all of us um, because I don't know where everybody is. I don't know where everybody's reading. Um, and I don't know everybody's understanding. Um, but if you've been reading something and, and you don't have quite the clarity that you might be longing for, um, and if we can help you out in that, that, that realm, 
um, just for a moment or two on tonight. Um, we, we're going to leave it open for discussion for about 10 minutes. So if anybody has a scripture that they've been reading, um, Facebook or, or, or YouTube, and you just want to look at it, um, or if you want us to know where you've been reading and what you've been reading and how you see it, um, um, bring that scripture forth. And while we're doing that as well, um, let's put our prayer requests in. Um, I want to greet uh, also tonight, Sister Rhonda, uh, Sister Rhonda Bird. So glad Sister Rhonda can be with us on tonight. Amen. So glad that you're coming in so faithfully um, to watch along with us as well. Amen. So does anybody have a scripture tonight? Anybody been reading anything that they might want to just discuss with the uh, um, uh, church family before we move on? Anybody? Anybody out there? And I, there again, I know, you know, Facebook has a lag about 15 seconds behind our StreamYard broadcast. Um, but if anybody has something that they might want to bring forth, if not, then we'll go into our lesson on tonight. Amen. Amen. I don't see nothing coming up. Does anybody, um, and, and there again, you can post your prayer requests um, throughout the broadcast. If you have something or need of prayer, or you know of somebody who is in need of prayer, um, then you can go ahead and put that prayer request and I'm just going to ask that if I, if, if when you do that, that somebody will take notation of it um, while we're going through our lesson. That would be so, so helpful. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I don't see any scriptures coming up, um, but that's all right, too. Uh, but, you know, you know, God, you know, I, 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 I do these things so that we might actively participate. And there again, I know some people you might not want to put be put out in front. Um, um, Sandra, oh, 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 Sister Rhonda, Sister Rhonda says Psalms ninety one need a clearer understanding. Psalms ninety one. Um, let me ask you this, Sister Rhonda, as you were reading Psalms ninety one. What is your perception? If you can just type in, what is your perception of Psalms 91? You don't know Psalms 91 is only 16 verses, um, but what is your perception of it that we might see from your point of view first, and then we'll go and just look at the scripture just in a small way, amen? Amen. While you're doing that, Sister Rhonda, I'm gonna read Psalms 91 um, for the hearing. Um, of our viewing audience. Amen. Psalms 91 reads like this, and I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be by thy by, be, shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy right side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation." There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thee, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thine ways. And they shall bear thee up in their hands, thou sh lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. 
salvation. Amen. Glory be to God. And that is uh, a, 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 a very popular um, psalm nowadays. Everybody wants to read Psalm 91. Um, but to me, Psalm 91 is, is a culmination of God's awesome presence in our lives. God's awesome presence is something um, that we ought to acknowledge at all times. But the key things that I find out about that psalm is, uh, Sister uh, uh, Rhonda, um, is that the simple fact that first we have to do something, and that is to truly allow God to be our all in all. We have to submit ourselves unto God. We have to live a life uh, that is that is truly geared to the to the understanding and knowledge of who God is. Um, and then all of these things will truly be followed. You know, there are so many things that God has already done for us, but all God is asking a, a, of us is to come unto him and to truly, you know, uh, let him be God. Let him be God in our lives. And that's what I look at Psalm 91 is. Psalm 91 to me is saying, God, God is telling his people, let me be God in your life. Let me do what I'm going to do. Let me do what I've already set in plan. Um, but you have to remain under this auspicious head or, or all wise providence of a sovereign, sovereign God. And we can't question him in those areas. But she's saying verse 13, verse 13 says, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under foot. Amen. And, and once and again, we, we can find those very verses in different parts of our scriptures. We can find a part of that verse in, um, in uh, 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 Isaiah. Isaiah 55 will show us something about uh, how God will protect us from the lion. And uh, we can also go over to Revelations and Revelations, I think it's either 21 or 22. It'll also show us how God is going to put the things under our, or he's going to put it in the hands of Jesus. And Jesus is then going to allow us to dwell uh, in that safe place. Amen. Does Pastor Graham or Dr. Bright have anything to add on to that before we move on? I can Pastor Graham? Uh, I was just going to say that it, it is a, a psalm of uh, protection. Uh, yes. And <clears throat> a couple of things. Oh, it is so, also, in order to be uh, protected, you must be in the right position. Yes. Under the wings of the uh, shadows of Mosai. But as we go forward, in the New Testament, he shows us a different way to protect ourselves. Uh, Ephesians 6, to put on the whole armor. That's right. So, and uh, whatever you do, please don't use that psalm as some type of, uh, like, uh, <laughs> some type of spell or something because, <laughs> and I'm serious about it because I heard a lot, when COVID first hit, I heard a lot of people quoting this psalm like it was a, uh, just to guarantee that, uh, to guarantee them against COVID and that that's not what that is there for. You know what I mean? It's, it's there for us to understand that God is our protector and uh, putting the lion uh, or and the dragon under your foot, anything under your foot is a sign of defeat, right? Because remember when uh, uh, in uh, Genesis 3, Proto Evangel of uh, 315 and around there 16. Remember, uh, uh, God God says that Jesus will bruise Satan's, will bruise his head off. Do I have that right? But anyway, yeah. <laughs> you're under putting something under your foot is a sign of defeat. So, with God's protection, He's saying that He will uh, 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 give us a victory over those things that try to try umphant over us and so understand that uh, that does not mean something will won't uh attack you or come at you but it does mm -hmm. mean god will deliver you and and uh make you victorious amen thank you pastor graham uh sister Rhonda, i hope that uh helped you when you're in your reading and your understanding um because this is pastor graham had noted you know 
uh, there were lit many people who weren't living um, a life that was truly geared towards serving God, but yet they started quoting this like this was going to be their banner uh, that they were going to put up uh, so that they, you know, nothing would happen to them. Um, but, you know, once and again, a, a true Christian or somebody who has an understanding of God realized to know that uh, Bible said over in Psalms 34 are many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver you. So not only do you have to understand that, yeah, God is going to protect you. Um, but there again, God said he will deliver you. And a lot of people will understand the protection, but a lot of people don't understand the delivering part of that whole um, situation. So once and again, you got to apply the whole scripture. You got to get understanding of who God is and what God, we know that God can do all things except for fail. Um, but once and again, we have a part that we have to submit to or, or, or acknowledge um, when, when, when God is speaking to us in this way. Amen. So I, I hope that pray and I hope that helped you, uh, Sister Rhonda. Um, um, but there again, I thank you for that scripture. I thank you for your participation um, in this, uh, in, 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 in the question or the, um, uh, what I asked of y'all to do. So thank you, Sister Rhonda. I do appreciate that. Amen. Um, glory be to God. We're going to go into our lesson now. And I, I pray that everybody uh, has had a good day and everybody has truly um, uh, submitted themselves unto the Lord. Because I tell you, without submitting ourselves unto the Lord, uh, we run a rough, rough race, y'all. We run a rough race, you know, and it's amazing how um, the Apostle Paul uh, often use the analogy of the Christian running a race um, and that to for you to get a prize, you have to be in the race. So that is very important um, for us to understand. Amen. Um, tonight, what I want to do tonight, what I want to do. And um, as I prepared this lesson on today, because God just handed me this on today, um, you know, because uh, uh, I was asking the Lord, I said, I, I have this, Lord, do you want me to teach that. I have this, you know, in the line of some things that we've already been understanding. Um, but God sent me in another way on tonight. And I'm just going to pray this. Stay with my thought because I don't have everything lined up like I would like to have it lined up. Um, but just stay with me in thought tonight because it was a very good thought that the Lord gave me. And I truly want to uh, give it to the people because I believe that the thought that God gave me um, and, and, the, and, the, and the way that God gave it to me uh, will help many of us uh, um, uh, in our Christian walk um, and the way we receive things, the way we perceive things. But not only that, um, the way we handle things and the way we expect things. I think God gave me something here tonight that is really going to bless the body of Christ. So stay with me on tonight um, as we go forth and, 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 and just follow the thought. My, 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 my liner notes might be not all in place, but my, my thought is in place. I do believe. Amen. So y'all pray for me as I go in. Um, but let's go to Galatians. I want to go to the book of Galatians. I want to go to chapter six, Galatians chapter six. And once and again, you know, it, it is a familiar scripture, uh, but I think sometimes we take it out of context or we take it in the wrong context or we take it with the wrong reasoning and the wrong expectation. Amen. So this is the way God gave it to me, um, because because sometimes we 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 walk looking for things and just because we don't receive them, um, we, we we get bent out of shape or we don't we don't trust God like we ought to. Um, but I think this is going to give us some clarity. So so once and again, I'm going to go to Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter six. And it's in the New Testament. It's one of the epistles written by Paul. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. I call it the gap, but Galatians is the first one. Amen. Galatians chapter, I mean, uh, chap chapter six, verses six through ten. And I'm going to read those verses, read them from Galatians 6, from 6 through 10, Ga Galatians 6, verses 6 through 10, out of the King James Version. And please read along with me. It says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap of the flesh reap uh, shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. Um, uh, let me just say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I praise you. I'm giving you glory, honor, and praise even now, God. Lord, I pray, pray that you will bring clarity of thought as I bring this lesson on tonight, that your people might receive it, believe it, and achieve it, Father God. Lord, I send this word out, Father God, and knowing that your spirit, Father God, will touch the hearts and minds of all men, Lord. And I pray that it'll move your people in a way, God, that they might see you in a better light and not only see you, but see their responsibility towards you father god so lord i just thank you i praise you and i give you glory honor and praise even now and it is in the mighty and the matchless name of jesus to christ i do pray and i do say amen um glory be to god you know church sometimes i i think that um we 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 look at scripture um and when we look at scripture we only want to receive one thing out of it and and the one thing that we want to receive out of it is is something that possibly we've been longing for, something that we've been questing for, something that we've been desiring of, uh, something that we are in hope of, or basically something that we are in need of. And and God showed me this scripture today because um, sometimes church we miss the mark or we miss uh, the blessings of God uh, by the way that we we perceive something or 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 by the way we feel about a thing or or by the way we understand it um we'll miss the blessing of god and and then we'll start getting upset or we'll blame it on other things or we'll, we'll blame it on somebody else or we'll blame it on a situation or we start blaming it on a circumstance um but one thing i've learned here now is we don't never want to blame it on ourselves amen we don't never want to look at the, the the whole conclusion of the matter and see that we are the root of it all and i want to bring this scripture to you tonight i'm laughing because I'm laughing at myself, y'all. Please understand this. I'm laughing at myself because I found myself in these types of situations where I just said, well, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, God, why, why couldn't I have that? Or why didn't you do that? Or, or why didn't this turn out the way um, that I, I thought it should turn out? But God showed me something in the scripture um, on, on tonight. And I just want to start. It's very simple, y'all. And, you know, when I first came to Christ and I first started sitting under the word of God and there was teachers teaching. And, and one of the things that was taught um, um, when I first came in, you know, one of the things that was taught was sometimes, you know, that God has um, our blessings on a revolving belt. And I got this analogy because I was in the airport the other day and I watched the bags go around. And as the bags were going around, when your bag came up, then you lifted the bag off of the, the conveyor belt. And I was thinking about that. And this is how we were taught that God's blessings go around and around and around. And if you're not there on the first time, uh, then you're going to miss your blessing. If you're not in position to grab your bag, then you're going to miss the blessing. Uh, and I kept thinking about that. I kept thinking about that. And then I had to really think about the the scriptures, y'all. I started thinking about the scriptures, and that's where um, verse six of this lesson comes in. Listen, the verse six says, "Let him that is taught in the word." That means you and I, everybody, everybody that is taught in the word. Let us communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. And I started pondering that word because I said, "Well, God, what do you mean by let us communicate? Um, let us communicate unto him that teacheth." in all good things. And, and basically you're saying, well, why should believers do good to their teachers? Mm. I had to think about this and I had to ponder it. Why should we as believers do good to them that are teaching us? 
And, 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 you know, first thing in our minds, you know, well, you need to bless the man of God. You need to put a little piece of money in his hand. Uh, 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 you need to uh, pay a bill for him or, or you need to put gas in it. You need to do something for the word, for the man of God. And then I had to take that thing a little deeper. And I got the part of this uh, uh, from what Pastor Graham was teaching on the, day, the other day about um, a foolish man. And why is he called foolish? And, and basically, it's because of the way he approaches the situation. Um, he approaches the situation and not with reverence to God or not with reverence to the word of God or not with reverence into the spirit. Or he doesn't put the things in, in, into perspective like he should. And, and see, and this is where we start here um, and, and, and seeing why sometimes we miss our blessings. I, I, it says here, let him that is taught in the word, which is the word of God, communicate, or I looked at that word in the in the concordance, and, and, and that word communicate um, is it, 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 the same word as share or, or to distribute. Um, we are to we are to share or distribute unto him that teaches in all good things. But the word took me a little bit deeper, y'all. It's because once here again, um, once we are taught good things, then we ought to once and again uh, communicate those good things unto others. We ought to be in a place in a position that we receive the word. And when we receive the word, then we can also be participant or participants in that word. And that's very key to our Christian journey. I, I got a, 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 a thought here. Um, how many of us, and I know this is the old world terminology when I say this, because we normally relate this to movies or some type of book or something that we've read on uh, 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 somebody uh, going on a journey. But how many of us have been on a quest for something? How many of us have been looking for something? How many of us have have truly um, um, just gone on a journey to seek something out? And 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 I, that that came to me because I, I'm realizing to know now that many of us and most of us are looking for something, or 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 we have a desire for something, or or we are longing for something, or we are in hope for something, or we are in need of something. And because we have all of these these adjectives going on in our lives, you know, we we have the desire, the hope, the longing. Um, but the Bible tells us that um, we ought to do certain things um, if we are to truly going to uh, receive of certain things. And I don't want to get this messed up with no prosperity message. I don't want it to get messed up with no um, 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 word of faith message. But I want to get to the basic elements and the basic principles of God uh, that God will show us who he is, how he is, and how he operates. I hope somebody's staying with me there because it's going to be necessary, necess necess necessary for us to understand this. You know, and as we go on these journeys, as we go and we have these desires, you know, it seems like a lot of us sometimes we never seem to take hold uh, of these desires. We never seem to to um, 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 have the fullness of, of these of these things that we're longing for, or we never see the manifestation um, of things that we have hoped for. And I kept asking myself here lately. I said, God, how come um, certain certain things don't befall us, or certain things don't we don't we don't receive um, certain things um, like we are, uh, like like we should, or like we would want to have them. And God began to start um, speaking to me, and He spoke to me uh, about this verse. This is especially on today um, about these things. You know, it says here in verse seven, it says, "Be not deceived; God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap." Um, and I come to this thing now because it seems like everybody is is searching or looking um, for something. Um, stay with my thought, please. And and I, like I said, I didn't lay this out point by point, but um, I, I want you to stay here uh, because sometimes, you know, if we don't give credence or if we don't give adherence uh, to the things that are taught to us, 
if we don't give uh, reverence to the word of God at, as it is given to us, then it leads us from chapter uh, verse six into verse seven. Verse six tells us that we ought to really be participants or partakers of the word of God. And if we're not partakers in the word of God, and if we don't communicate good things unto him that teaches us or respect the man or the woman that has taught us the good things of the Bible, then it's easy for us to be deceived. And I want to get there because it seems like a lot of us today have been deceived about things that God can and will do. Um, it seems to me now that there are many of us who go about receiving the things of God in the wrong understanding, in the wrong knowledge, and in the wrong light. And because we go to receive the things of God in the wrong understanding, wrong light, and wrong knowledge, we don't receive what God has already given unto us. I, I, I want to go here because the Bible says God is not mocked. What does that mean when we say God is not mocked? God is not mocked. You know, and this is very uh, uh, needful for us to understand um, when it says that God is not mocked because, you know, there's a lot of things and we have to look at that word mocked. That word mocked is, is more or less you turn your nose up um, um, or you reject what God is truly trying to show us. We sometimes don't don't put in proper perspective the word of God, the knowledge of God, or the presence of God in our life. And when we do this, we do this, it'll tell us that we actually reject God or we uh, put God on the back burner or we abandon God for what we want at that time or for what we think we need, or we believe that we have a better way of receiving it. Amen. The Bible says God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. And this is one thing church that I think we need a greater understanding um, for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap reap. Um, this thing here is, is I think, uh, one of the things that the body of Christ has twisted, twisted up and given no credence to, um, because I think we believe that, that if we, um, um, just so to what we want, mm, so to what we want without the understanding of who God is. And what I'm saying there is, please stay with me. Um, we, what we'll do is say, like, if I want a car, then then I will go and 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 I will sow uh, a, a a dollar amount, or I'll sow something into a preacher to get that car. Or I believe that my blessings is predicated on 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 how much I give uh, uh, to a, a a certain entity, or how much I uh, 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 stand in. Um, uh, should I say? Should, should I say that we stand in 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 um, 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 need of? Then I start sowing to that area, but I'm sowing the wrong things, or or I'm show, sowing not in agreement with God, but in but in disagreement to God, but trying to get the same um, results. Listen to this here. I got one note. Um, a person can be deceived about facing judgment of God. The word deceived uh, means to placina means to be led astray. Some Galatians were led astray in the matter. They were failing to share in the ministry of Paul, becoming critics instead of supporters. And note that what uh, and to note what was attacking they were attacking the teachers of God um, and mocking them. Um, and 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 if this and when they were doing that, um, if a month, if, if, if when they were doing that, they were sowing discord and they were sowing some things um, into uh, 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 in in not right relation with what they needed or what they truly had the desire of having. Uh, it says, if a man sows a life that is not present with the teach with the with what the teacher teaches, um, if he sows into uh, not being attentive, or if he sows into uh, um, um, not passing on what the teacher does, or if he sows into not participating with what the what the teacher's 
ministering on, or if he sows uh, not in uh, not to encourage others to learn from the teacher. If a man sows this rejection, this turning up the nose, he rejects and turns his nose up at God. And if he rejects God, he shall be rejected by God. Whatever a man sows towards his teacher, he reaps. He shall bear the judgment of his behavior towards God's teacher. Now, there again, if we're it, just because we think that we sow a dollar amount, that we're going to receive a blessing, then we have the wrong perception. God is requiring more from us. God is really requiring us to be participants or to participate in his word and the distribution of his word and in the fulfillment um, of, 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 of his will. Um, but you see, oftentimes we get this twisted because we put our desires ahead of the will of God or we put our um, thought or our uh, uh, longing for it uh, uh, ahead of the will of God. And, and it says here, uh, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a, a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse eight says, for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. I, I want to so stop there and I want to sidebar because oftentimes, um, church, what we sow um, is not good seed. Uh, and I want to uh, 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 explain this to you. You know, if we take our desires and we make our desire the seed, then we plant it the wrong seed. And, and why do you say that? Because the Bible will clearly tell us uh, that in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. So that means in our fleshly desires, in our fleshly lust, in our fleshly wants, in our fleshly longing for, or if we're flesh or, or, or if we're hoping something through the flesh or through the, the desires of the flesh, then that is a corrupt seed. I want to go someplace to with you and I want you to follow me. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter eight. And Deuteronomy chapter eight is a very good verse and it tells us that we ought to remember God in all things, that we ought to um, really pay respect and reverence unto God, um, and that we ought to give God all of our devotion, all of our love, and all of our, um, our heart, our mind, and our soul. And he says here um, in verse, uh, hold on, let me just catch it here. Let me read it from here, verse two. It, no, let me read from verse one. Read this along with me, church. It says, uh, Deuteronomy chapter eight, starting at verse one. He says, all the commandments which I command ye this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live, multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And that shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led these, these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and feed thee with manna which thou knowest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee known that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. First of all, we have to go to some place to receive God, but we have to know that we live by the word of God. We live by the understanding of God's word. We live by the depths of God's word. We live by the direction of God's word and not by our own desires or our own uh, 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 longing for or, or our own quest. There's got to be something that drives our quest. There's got to be something that drives our desires. There's got to be something that drives the things that we are longing for. And therefore, if we start sowing out of our fleshly desires, the Bible tells us correctly that we're only going to reap corruption. But it says here, um, um, uh, let me see. I just got to find the verse, y'all. Stay with me one second. It 
It says, for the, the Lord thy God bringeth thee into uh, Deuteronomy 8 still. It says, for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, fountains, and depths of water spring out of the valleys, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of the hills Whose, whose hills they may dig brass. When thou hast eaten and are full, then shalt thou bless the Lord. Listen here. When thou hast eaten and are full, then shalt thou bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in keeping his commandments and judgments and his statutes, which I command you this day, lest when you have eaten and are full and has built godly, goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and thou hast has it multiplied, then in thy heart that to be lifted up. But basically he's saying here, forget not the Lord thy God. Um, but there's a verse in here that I'm trying to find. Um, and the verse is stating and says that, um, um, but God will give seed to the sower. See, and that's what I'm trying to find here. I just can't pick it out of the, the, the scripture right now. And I don't want to continue to prolong the time and, and looking for it. But it's there that and it says that God will give seed to the sower. Amen. And because God gives seed to the sower, then we ought to be sowing that which God has given unto us. God will give us the goodly things to sow as opposed to our own um, our own desires, our own lusts, or our own liking. God will give us the seed, church. And that's my point here, that God will give seed to the sower, that when the seed is sown, then we shall reap what God would have us to reap. I got an understanding here because um, if, if we serve this good great, merciful, kind, loving, and peaceful God, then what we are looking for should be the things of God and not the things of our own desires. We shouldn't be looking for, uh, uh, and, and don't, not to say that God won't give them to you, church, because I do believe that God has all things planted from the day that we were, uh, from, 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 from beginning of all things, because God has truly have all things already pre-adventurous for us. But my thing about it is, and this is the point that I want to bring here. Um, he says, uh, for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. I believe, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I got a panel on here that I believe will correct me, but God has already um, what we need, what we have need of. Um, he has everything that pertains to life and godliness according to the knowledge of Christ Jesus. The Bible says that he shall supply all of our needs according to his riches, which are in Christ, riches and glory, which are in Christ Jesus. Um, he says that God says that he will, he, he is not um, slack according to his promises. So all the things that God has already promised for us, already ordained for us, already given through us, that goodly inheritance, um, uh, um, the, 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 the things that God says that are already laid up for us, I believe that those blessings are etched in stone, y'all. They're etched in eternity forever. And they're not on a revolving turnstile. They're not going around and around or your blessings aren't given to somebody else or that somebody, uh, uh, you got to wait in turn or wait in line for your blessings to roll back around. But I think this all goes back to the 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 the, the, the principle uh, of, of reaping and sowing. Um, if we reap or if, if we sow good things, if we sow the word of God, if we sow the peace of God, if we sow the love of God, if we sow the, the, the joy of God, then and then only shall we reap also the same thing that we sowed. Amen. What I'm saying is if, if we sow to the flesh, then we're only going to reap 
fleshly things. Um, if we so uh, 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 looking for cars, if we so looking for houses, if we so uh, looking for a better position, if we so looking for a better place uh, in, in society, if we're just sowing to those aspects of life, then I believe that God in turn, yes, he can give them to us, but there's going to be a period of of, 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 of of us going through the processes to get it. Um, what I'm talking about here is those earthly things are already where God wants them to be, but God is trying to get us to see that the earthly things are not what's going to necessarily benefit us. It is the heavenly things that God has already laid up, and this is my point here, that our blessings are already here, but we have to change our mind about what we're sowing and how we're sowing to really have them manifested in our lives. I hope I'm not losing nobody. Pastors, if you want to say something, Brother Victor, Dr. Bright, um, if you want to say something, go ahead and chime right in, or if you have a question. Um, and what I'm saying here is that sometimes we're looking for the manifestation of things, but God has already given them to us if it's according to his will. The thing that we're missing or the thing that we can't lay hold to is that God is sometimes looking at us and he's saying, are you able to handle what I have for you? Are you able to receive what I have for you? God is saying to me, he said today, he said, sometimes we look for peace but you already have peace. How do I know this? The Bible tells me that if I would keep my mind stayed on him, as it states over in the book of Isaiah, if I would keep my mind stayed on him, he would keep me in perfect peace. So what is the objective here? Or what is the thought here? I have to keep my mind on the things of God to receive total peace. If I'm looking for joy, the Bible already tells me that I have joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. If I'm looking for strength, um, the Bible. So it, it just tells us so many things that God has already given to us, but we don't receive them because we're not in the right frame of mind or we are not so sowing to what we really should be reaping. We should be sowing to the peace of God. We should be sowing to the love of God. We should be sowing to the joy of God. We should be sowing to the meekness of God. We should be sowing to this, that in turn, then God's manifestation of his spirit might fulfill us, might manifest in us, and that we might therefore live in the blessings, y'all, live in the blessings. We're going to reap if we, what we sow, if we sow to the spirit of life. Let's go back. I want to go to Luke. I want to go to Luke chapter six. Go to Luke chapter six and, 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 and let's look at this verse um, 38. Let's look at this verse 38. Luke chapter six, verse 38 says, give. And it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all shall be measured to you again. This verse sometimes church and has been so uh, misinterpreted, I believe, in the church. Um, because the only time we've ever really um, um, adhered or, or looked at this verse in a good light was when it was given money. Um, if you give money, then a money will give, be given back to you. Um, but but this is more than just a money verse or it's more than just a giving of tithe verse. It's more than just giving of an offering verse. Because if you back up, if you back up um, until verse um, verse 27. And, and just listen to how this fits into the context of this scripture. He says, but I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. So if you love your enemies right there, you are sowing love. Um, if, if, if you sow love to your enemies and, and, and it's not saying that you're going to automatically receive that, but love there again is going to be surrounding you because you were the first sower 
of it. You sowed it. You sowed it. You you planted it. You gave it into good the ground. You gave it to what God was telling you to do with it. And if God gives you the seed of love and you plant love, love somewhere, somehow, someday will come back up. That's a guarantee of God. So we really, if you sow love, love is going to come back. And it says, do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. If you plant or you sow the blessing into somebody else, if you sow that blessing, then not maybe today, might not be tomorrow, might not be in your love in your lifetime, but that very thing is going to come back and bless somebody somehow, some way. You sowed a blessing. And when you sowed the blessing, you gave into somebody's life. You gave somebody a word. You gave somebody hope. You gave somebody a, a, a scripture of strength or you gave somebody comfort. You sowed a blessing. And when you sow that blessing, that blessing will come back, y'all. And I got, I I just can't say this enough. He says, um, and unto him that smited thee on one cheek, offer also the other. That's so in peace, y'all. When you sow peace, when you put peace in the ground, peace will come back up. Now, you might not see the manifestation right then, but there again, God is going to give you peace in the fact that you know what you did was right in the sight of God. That alone removes all the 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 the, the um, bondage or 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 the things that inhibit God to operate in your life right there. You've sown peace, y'all. Check this out. It says, um, it, uh, it says, uh, check, ch turn the, the one cheek off, offer also the other and give him that taketh away thy cloak. Forbid not to take thy cloak. Also, if a man needs your coat, give him the coat. You're sowing, you're sowing him help. You, if he needs it, or or it, even if he stole it, tell him he can have it. You're giving unto him the love of God. He says, "Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would the men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise." So that means if love is coming to you, give love back. He says, for if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? And there again, church, and it's the way we're sowing. You know, if we sow to the people we only like, if we sow to only our friends, if we are sow only to our associates, then then what thanks have we? Because we've already know them. We are they already know who we are and what we are. But it's when you sow to them that you don't know or you don't have a, a, a good rapport with or you don't have that same relation with when you start sowing to them then this scripture on, on 638 comes into full effect it comes into full effect and it gives us a greater awareness and presence of god in our life you see and it's when we get the greater awareness and the presence of god in our life then and only then can the blessings that god has already ordained for us can we see the manifestation of them let's go here again to matthew chapter 5 let's listen to this matthew chapter 5 and let's look at let's look at um I want to say Matthew chapter 5 6 7 7 8 and 9 and this is just excerpts out of this wonderful passage um, this discourse that Jesus was given on the Sermon of the Mount. But listen to it here. He says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So once and again, if we sow the seed of mercy, is not mercy going to come back to us? If we look at God and say, blessed are the pure in heart, for blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God right there. 
Blessed are the pure in heart. If we sow a pure heart unto the ground, then we will see the manifestation of God in the land of the living. We can see God's peace. We can see God's joy. We can see what we have sown and we can begin to reap the harvest. You know, so many days, so many times, so many people right now are looking for peace in their life. So many people are looking for joy in their life. So many people are, 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 are looking for mercy. So many people are, are just looking and longing for things. But I'm telling you right now, church, if we would approach God in the right way, if we would do according to what God's word says to us, do the things that people through the Bible have taught us. If we would be participants in the word of God, if we would start enacting the word of God in our lives, then we can have the manifestation because I do not believe our blessings are going around on a conveyor belt. I, bless, I believe that our blessings are at a point in time that at that point in time, then we will receive that blessing and that that God gives to you is only for you. Amen. I looked at this thing in an analogy today and I was traveling this weekend and church, do you know that New York City is always going to be where New York City is as long as America is uh, in the context that it's in now or Washington DC is always going to be where Washington DC is um, or, 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 or Los Angeles, California is always going to be where Los Angeles, California is. But the point of it is it's going to be there. It's going to remain there. And it's just like your blessing. Your blessing is going to be there. It's going to remain there, but you have to take the initiative to do all of the right things to get from where you are to where the blessing is. Mm, I hope somebody understood that. So what I'm saying in here is when you start reaping to the spirit, you start reaping the good things of God. I mean, start sowing the word of God, start sowing it into others' lives, start sowing it into the manner, then, then, the, 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 then the blessings, you are, you are traveling on the road to where your blessing is. See, and I gotta say this, I'm gonna sidebar here. I believe that just as God uh, created the day, the, created the earth, the air, the, the heavens, um, the animals, the livestock and man, as he created all them things in six days, then six days, the creation that God um, brought forth is still there, has nothing changed about it, has nothing gone uh, awry about it. It's just the way he did it. And he said it was a finished work. I believe the same thing at the cross. When Christ went to the cross and when he hung there, bled and died, and when he fulfilled all of the law and he fulfilled everything that the um, uh, 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 Moses and the law had commanded of a perfect man, and when he gave his life as a perfect sacrifice, then it was a finished work at the cross. And what am I saying when I say that? I believe that when God died on the cross, our blessings or, and our inheritance inheritance was already laid up for us, each and every one of us, each and every one of us that believe, each and every one of us that have a mind to serve God, each and every one of us that have the knowledge or want to learn of God and who have not rejected God. I believe that our blessings are at a point in time and that God is traveling. We are traveling this journey. We are on this quest and that it is right there. And many of us don't even know that the kingdom of God is nigh. It's even in our mouth. So what does that mean? That means our blessings are surrounding us at all times. The only problem is we can't see the manifestation of the blessing. Hell, I hope I'm helping somebody here. The manifested blessing is right there. Because look at what God says. I'm going to go back to Luke 6 and 38 one more time. Um, let's just look at this. Luke 6 and 38 says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. So what does that mean? That means that when I have done what God has required of me, when I've sown his word, when I've sown into good ground, when I've lived a life that is representation of Christ himself, when when I present uh, a God to people, um, not in deceitfulness or not in maliciousness, but I've come and I've sown the good word of God, just as I've been taught the good word of God, just as I have now um, 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 received the word of God, I sow it back into the life 
lives of others. And when I start sowing or I start giving, what am I giving? I'm giving love. I'm giving peace. I'm giving joy. I'm giving long suffering. I'm giving meekness. I'm giving temperance. I'm giving faith. I'm, I'm, I'm giving these things um, back unto uh, the ground that God told me to plant these seeds in. Then he says, it shall be meted back unto me again. So the thing about it is the blessings are right here, but we're going to have to be percent. We're going to have to perceive them. We're going to have to see them. And the only way that we can see them and receive them is with the pure heart, because with the pure heart, then we can see all of what God has truly already ordained for us to have. I hope somebody's getting something out of this. It's all about what we sow, y'all. Are we sowing into good ground? Are we sowing um, love, peace, and joy? Or are we sowing, uh, like the Bible says, um, are we sowing the works of the flesh? Are we sowing hatred? Are we serving, uh, sowing uh, emulence? Are we, are, are we sowing discord? Are, are, are these the things that we are sowing? Because if we are sowing these things, then we're also, and I believe that whatever you sow, you shall reap. And when we sow these things, these things are going to come back on us. They're going to cause chaos in our life. They're going to uh, 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 sow corruption in our life. They're going to sow discord in our life. They're going to sow hatred in our lives. But the Bible says, um, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap ever life everlasting. And there again, if we look at Galatians 5 and 22, and it tells us the fruit of the spirit. These are the things that we in turn are going to reap from the spirit. And it says, let us not be weary in well doing for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Somebody say due season and somebody there again can say it's my time. What is my time? My time is when I see God for who he is, when I understand God, I, when I understand how God gave his very best. And I don't know if any of y'all um, understand the law of uh, reciprocity or, or, or that um, given, uh, given it shall be given back unto you or, or that shall be reciprocated unto you what you've given out. Um, I, I looked at that thing today. You know, God um, has already given us everything that we need. God has already given us the best gift. He gave us his very best. He gave us unconditional love. He gave us mercy. He gave us grace. He, he gave us all the things that we need um, in this life. But don't you know, we reject most of what God has given us because we don't receive God in the fullness. If you don't receive God in the fullness and you don't reciprocate back unto him, him, what has already been given unto us, then God can 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 prolong, or God will 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 take you through the times, and just like He did with the children in the in the wilderness, God had them go around for forty years to what to see what was in thine heart, to show them what was in thine heart. He made them eat manna. He gave them the substance that He needed, but at the same time, they had to go through to get to where they were going. The book the possession of the good land. But I'm telling you here now that when Christ died on the cross, he gave us everything that we needed. And so if we would if we would sow what God is telling us to sow, as opposed to sowing what we think we should sow, then we shall reap the spirit. The, the, the Bible says that of the spirit, we shall reap life everlasting. And it says, let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. That due season, y'all, is when we fully acknowledge God. That due season is when we fully say, God, I surrender unto you. I submit my will. I submit my way. That due season is saying, hey, I see God in reverence and I put him in reverence. I, I, I render it all unto him. Because when we do that, church, then will we see the manifestation of peace in our life. We'll, we'll see the manifestation of joy in our life. We'll see the goodly blessings that God has already 
provided for us. We'll see the inheritance that God has already laid up for us. He said we've already have everything that we need that pertaineth to life and godliness through the knowledge of Christ Jesus. He said to us he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory, which are in Christ Jesus. The key word there is, and I make note of this, you got to know who Christ Jesus is. And if you know who Christ Jesus is, you know that all of your needs have already been supplied. Some of us are missing it. Some of us can't lay hold on to it because we're not looking for what God has already ordained for us, but we're looking to, to satisfy our own fleshly desires. We've sown in corruption. I mean, we, we've sown to the flesh and we're reaping corruption right now. We, we've sown these things with discord. We've sown these things with variance in our heart, with emulation in our heart. We've sown these things in lasciviousness. We've sown these things, but out of all that sowing that we did, which was sowing to the flesh, we still want all the benefits of God. And God said, it's not so. God says, if you, if you do what's right, if you do what's good, then you'll reap in due season if we faint not. And then the 10th verse says, as we have therefore opportunity, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And this brings us back to the first uh, uh, the scripture in chapter six. When you have somebody teaching you the word of God, and you have somebody breaking word down, explaining to you scripture. If you have somebody not trying to deceive you or, or, or lead you astray, you know, because this was a big problem in the church of Galatia. The, the Judaizers was once and again trying to come in and telling uh, the, 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 the newly converted Christians uh, that they had to be circumcised. They had to be this. They had to be that uh, to be to be in the fellowship. Um, and, and they were leading the people away from Christ and not bringing them to Christ. But if you have somebody who is truly offering you the uh, the good word of God, the, the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, you are to be a participator in that participant in that word. And when you are a participant in that word, then you are sowing a good seed. You are sowing that which is to the spirit. You are sowing um, into the lives of others. You know, it is such a help if a man is teaching the word of God and then he sees that the person that he has uh, uh, given the word of God, if he sees them living a goodly life, if he sees them a life that in turn um, they are now spreading the gospel or in turn uh, uh, they are telling of the goodness of Jesus or in turn, they are helping somebody or they are, uh, the Bible says good religion is to the widows and orphans. If, if, if there's a help ministry in there, then, then that is truly a blessing to the man of God who has sown good things into your life. You ought to reciprocate that by sowing good things into somebody else's life. And when you start sowing the good things, the good seed that God has given you, because the Bible tells us that God gives seed to the sower. He gives good seed. And if you plant that good seed into good ground with the right heart, with the right frame of mind, then nothing but good harvest can come up. You will reap nothing but the benefits of God, the blessings of God. You will reap nothing but the love of God. You will reap nothing but God's true, true blessings that he has already laid up in heaven for you. And not only just laid up in heaven, but he said that he will give you some things right here on earth because the Bible tells us over in Matthew chapter 5 that the meek shall inherit the earth. We will inherit the goodness of this land. But church, we we have to get to this place where we learn how to sow good seed, y'all. Learn how to bless a man of God. And that doesn't have to be by money. That does not have to be in the, in the aspect that you're constantly sowing. But it helps, y'all. It helps. It supports. But when you uh, really come go forth and, and the man of God that has been teaching you can see you living a life 
that is truly geared to the word of God, that is truly geared uh, uh, to the manifestation of God and his word on this earth. And he sees you sowing good seed into others' lives. You know, that is such a blessing. There is no more greater compliment or greater blessing that you can give to somebody who taught you something than to to than to duplicate or reciprocate that which was given unto you. You see, this this things that we 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 sow. You know, I looked at a word today, y'all, and I really don't believe um, that Christians ought to be using the word karma. I, I, I'm a I'm a firm believer of it now more than ever. I always had problem with that word karma anyway. Um, and and then you know, as I looked at it in times past. You know, karma is a word taken from a very ancient religion, and and, and it, it was out of the uh, Valdec religion. Um, and and the Valdec religion was a religion that was in uh, 1000 or earlier BC, um, but it was the religion that led to Hinduism or or um, that 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 that. that uh, idea um, of reincarnation. So, if they're saying that if you uh, 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 um, if you live the life uh, here on this earth and you'll be reincarnated as a higher animal, basically saying what comes around goes around. I, I I can't adhere to that word in the Christian vernacular. I would rather say to us, let's live by the laws of reciprocity or let's live by the law of sowing and reaping. Let's sow to good ground that we might benefit the goodness of God. See, if you sow love, you're going to get back love. If you sow peace, you're going to get back peace. If you sow joy, you're going to get back joy. See, many of us right now don't have love. We don't have peace and we don't have joy joy because we're not sowing them into the ground that we should. We're not sowing them and giving them to the people that need it. We're not sowing them into the hearts of men. And because we're not sowing it into the hearts of men, therefore now we can't reap the very thing that we are on the quest for. We can't reap what we've been looking for. We can't reap what we've been desiring of. We can't reap um, um, what we've been hoping for. And we can't reap what we're in need of. You see, we're in need of so many things, but the law of sowing and reaping, the law of sowing and reaping is the only way I believe that these things are going to be manifested in our lives. I don't believe our blessings are going around on some carousel. I don't believe it, but I believe just as New York is New York and we're going to have to travel from here to New York to receive our blessing. And what is that road? That 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 road that we should be on is this road called Christianity, or 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 it is is it in the in the body in the form of Christ that we ought to be adhering um, uh, to the will of God. We ought to be adhering to the knowledge of God. We ought to be learning more each and every day. We ought to be reading our Bibles to get understanding and knowledge and wisdom. You know, we ought to be taking undertaking these things each and every day. Are we sowing into our spirit? the good things? Are we sowing into our spirit the knowledge of God? If you don't sow into your spirit the knowledge of God, well, how are you ever going to reap the benefits? How do you reap something that you don't know about? How can you gather in something into the barns or gathering in the sheaves, as they call them? That's when they would gather all the bundle of hay and they would put it in the barn. How can you gather nothing but tares if you don't know what the good wheat is or the goodness of God? If you don't reap what is good. See, we've been reaping a long time, but it ain't what God's been wanting us to reap. We've been sowing to things that God has never wanted us to sow to. But if we sow the good things, if we sow that seed, because God said that he would give seed to the sower. So are we sowing the seeds that God gave us, or are we sowing the seeds that the adversary has laid ready for us? You got to make a decision, and it's going to be your decision, church. And, and, and there again, the, this, this law of reaping and sowing, it is a very sound principle in, 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 in the laws of God. It is a very uh, uh, um, 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 foundational principle that we ought to adhere to. But we're going to have to sow into good ground. We're going to have to sow the goodness of God. Amen. And when we sow the goodness of God, the goodness of God, we shall reap. Amen. I, I pray that you got this lesson. I pray that you stuck in, you, 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 you received um, 
as as God gave it to me. Like I said, I didn't have all my notes in place because God was just showing me this today. Um, but I pray uh, that this will help you um, along your journey. Amen. Um, do we have any um, um, comments uh, uh, from the panel or comments from the Facebook or YouTube family? Um, my prayer wasn't going too fast for you, but I had to get it out the way that God was giving it to me. Amen. Uh, Pastor Bright, Dr. Bright, Pastor Graham. I don't have anything, Pastor. Good word. Appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Dr. Bright, I saw you unmuted for a second. Yeah, I just said amen. I was just saying amen to Pastor um, um, I understand, amen, to Pastor Graham and what he was saying, you know. Mm -mm, I don't have any uh, any words either. <laughs> I, <think> <laughs> I, I hope, I end there again, um, I, I always want to be biblically sound when I'm bringing something, and I pray um, that this message had a very good foundation in what we should be doing, the way we should be living as Christians, and really the way we um, should be viewing um, the things that we're we're longing for. I, I think that we miss so many things that we are we we should be gaining or should be benefiting from because we don't know how to sow the right seed. So I I, I just thank God. I, I pray this message really um blessed somebody because it blessed me. Um, you know, sometimes we don't receive what we're longing for because we just don't have the right perception of of how we should be. Um, once and again, laying forth uh, the groundwork or, or the seeds that um, we, we, we should be sowing. Amen. Um, uh, Sister Kim says it still has to be in his timing, though. Right. And there again, Sister Kim, I, I'm not looking at so much. We, we, we sometimes will often look at the material things. And yeah, the material things, I do believe that God has a time and a place. But when we start sowing for peace. When we start sowing for joy, I believe that these things are already ours. These things, we can, we can see the manifestation of these things in now time, in real time, right now, if we change the perspective of what we're sowing. You see, sometimes we want to sow for things, um, you know, the manifestation of material things. Um, but I believe that if we sow for the spiritual things, God has already blessed us with them. We just got to receive them. We just got to be in a place and an understanding to receive these things. But yeah, there are many things that I do believe that are in God's timing because pre-adventure, there again, certain things have been laid up from the beginning of time. God knew us before we was even born, but there was a state of, of, of being that we had to get to to receive these things. Yes, yes, it is in God's timing um, for many things. Yes. I hope I answered your question. Any other questions? Any other questions? Do I have any prayer requests before we close out tonight? Church, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer, as it says over in Romans, that um, the kingdom of God is nigh, it's near, it's even in your mouth. And, and what do I mean by that? We know that that scripture goes on over in Romans 10 to say that, um, um, you know, if you would confess the Lord Jesus, um, that he is Lord and, and receive unto him um, in your heart that he is Lord, then you shall be saved. And it's just that way, I believe, with the peace of God with the love of God, with the joy of God. And so many of us today are living without peace. So many of us today are living without joy. So many of us today are living without love. And the reason I believe that many of us are missing it or not laying hold to it is because with the seeds that we have sown are not the seeds of spiritual life or the everlasting life that God has already given unto us. See, we can receive these things right now. You can receive them. The Bible clearly states that if you would keep your mind stayed on me, Isaiah chapter 12, if you six and 12, if you would keep your mind stayed on me, then I would keep you in perfect peace. 
Philippians 4 and 8. It says, be careful for nothing but all things through prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God. And he is the very God that will guard your heart and your mind. He'll, the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. Um, uh, Philippians uh, uh, 4 and 8, uh, uh, 19. It says, he shall supply all of your needs according to your riches and glory. Now, there again, are our needs based in God and spirituality of God or our needs based Based in something that we've seen that we think that we need, um, that we that that God doesn't have the desire for us to have, are our, our needs um, based on what God uh, uh, has truly ordained for us to have? If God hasn't ordained for us to have it as a need, then will He supply it? We've got to understand our needs. He said He shall supply all of our needs, which are uh, 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 Oh, he shall supply all of our needs, which, which are in the riches, um, the riches of his glory, which are in Christ Jesus. So we really have to understand this thing um, um, for it to be manifested in our lives. It, it is the manifestation that I believe is right here. It's not on some carousel. It's right here for us to behold if we would sow seeds according to the good seed that God has given us. If we sow it into good ground, good ground, what is good ground? Good ground is a good fertile heart, a, a good fertile spirit, a good fertile um, attitude. If we would sow this into our lives and then we can sow it into others, I believe we'll, we will reap the manifestation of it. I, I'm a firm believer now more than ever that we can have peace right here. We can have joy right here. We can have love right here. Amen. You know, Pastor, just based on what you said, it's kind of saying whatever we want from God, we need to sow that. Yeah. That needs to be seeds that we're sowing. But there again, they've got to be sown in the in the in the in the in the, in the, the good seeds that God has given us. Seeds many of us are sowing seeds that God never gave us. If you understand what I mean, yes, we have the desires, but are we doing it in the right frame of mind? Are, are we doing it in the love, the peace and the joy um, that we ought to be sowing it in? Amen. Do I got any other questions or concerns or prayer requests or praise reports? You hey, uh, uh, just uh, keep up. Uh, uh, remember, I told you uh, I had a business deal just say uh, keep it uh lift it up some things have changed but i still believe we're supposed to uh go forward and i'm um, just uh seeking god's plan uh, god's uh uh voice in this matter uh-huh all right anybody else We will definitely keep the people in St. Louis lifted up in that surrounding area. Those people who have been caught in the floods. I'm going to ask and solicit the prayers that First Lady return home safe um, from her, her, her vacation. Anybody else? It's growing where we are watering it, so to speak. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kim. That's right. That is right. We want to grow up into a lively harvest. We want to definitely grow up. We want to all things to grow into a lively harvest, a spiritual harvest. Um, and there again, there's nothing wrong with natural things. And there's nothing wrong with the desire for having them. But once and again, how are you sowing your seed? If I'm sowing a seed in, 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 into the, to a kingdom just for what my flesh wants, um, then I, I, I believe that we're going to have trouble with that. I, I really do. Uh, Pastor, I will, yes, sir. I'll pray for uh, Sister Tawan and First Lady if you if you want me to. Yeah, I, actually, I was going to ask you to pray us out, um, Pastor. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll do that then. Let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you and we bless your name. And uh, scripture says tonight that we should participate, Lord. We should sow into those that have taught us and 
built this up, Father God, and we should participate in all good things uh, with that person. And so now, Lord, we thank you for the man of God, uh, Pastor Brent, and for the ministry, for the leadership. And Lord, we declare them a good thing, good teacher, Father God. And so we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that we sow all good things into this ministry, even if it's a thank you, because a thank you can go a long way, God. And then, Lord, we ask that you just bless First Lady and Sister Tawanda. We are excited that they're enjoying themselves, Father. We thank you for blessing them to arrive safely. And we pray now, Lord, that you would bring them back home, even the wiser, even the stronger in you, that they could share their excitement with others because of you. We ask now, Lord, that you have your way, that you be glorified, you be magnified. And Lord, we need you to be involved in our plans, Father God, because you have the answer to our plans. So please have your way. Bless this fellowship. Bless those that are on the line, Lord, YouTube and Facebook. Please uh, have your way in their lives. Let ministry come forth, Lord. Be glorified, magnified, and exalted in all things we say and we do. It is in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and we say, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Graham. Thank you, Dr. Bright. I appreciate you. I hope I wasn't Love rambling you. on. Ram Hello? <laughs> Love you more. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I hope I wasn't rambling on and nobody received. I hope you and pray that you received what God was trying to tell us here about sowing seeds. It's important that we sow good seeds if we want to reap a beneficial harvest. And, and that's the gist of the message. And we got to be careful um, of what we're sowing, yo. Let's not reap just because we personally um, um, want something. And don't get me wrong. Yes, we have desires, but let's put them in the right perspective and um, let God, like Pastor Graham, if he's praying for a, a plan for a business, but yet still he got to sow it in the right way, in the right manner. Um, because a lot of, you know, a lot of us have gotten greedy. Um, a lot of us have just gotten selfish and we're planting selfish seeds. We're, we're planting greedy seeds. Um, but we need to plant some good seeds, um, to have a good harvest. Amen. So come back on Sunday where we'll be bringing the word of God once and again, uh, we'll be coming on at, uh, 10 here in Durham. Um, but then Pastor Graham will be coming on his own, um, um, live at six, um, up from, from Virginia. So if you can support us in this way, we would love it and appreciate it. Um, and there again, if you need pastor Graham's, e um, a website address, address, um, or his, um, Facebook address is church on the rock ministries, T O T R M C O T R M on Facebook. And that'll bring you to him as well. So I, I just want to thank each and every one of you. I, I pray God to continue to bless you and keep you um, through the week, through your endeavors, through your pursuits. Um, but I pray that all your endeavors and your pursuits be godly ones. Amen. So everybody, I love you. Until the next time, may God continue to bless you and let us be dismissed. Oh man. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ rest, rule, reign, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. And let us all say amen. amen. Good night, y'all. Have a blessed night, night. until the next time. Bless you. Bless you. Bye. Bye.